Wellington Rugby TV, welcome back. Round 11, Swindale Shield, things starting to heat up as we head towards the Jubilee Cup and the playoffs. But time to get back on the couch, get back on the chair with one of Wellington's favourite sons. He needs no introduction, I'm sure. Corey Jane, welcome. Well, good to be here. I've seen a few of the episodes and uh, you know, I was asking, I keep saying when is it my turn, so finally get an opportunity. It's Boom, great. it's your turn yeah, right now, mate. mate. Can't wait. What are you up to? What have you been doing? Last saw you in a jersey, what? 12 months ago or so, what have you been up to since then? Yeah, I finished with the Hurricanes and then uh, I had one more year in Japan. And, um, and How was that? Oh, Are you fluent? Oh, I can't even speak English properly, okay. I learned right Japanese. On. But um, wait, everything but the rugby, I, I struggled a little bit in the rugby because over there you get told to do something and you've got to go and do it. We're here, you know, the coach will come up with a, a game plan or scenarios and then he'll meet with his players and you'll work out the best way going forward because obviously you're playing the game. We over there, there was none of that important. Um, but everything apart from that, like the, the heaps of family time, yep. um, I had to bike to, to training and stuff like that and um, food, the culture, uh, my teammates and the people were brilliant. Cool. Um, just the rugby side. Where are you now? Yeah, so I came back in, uh, in the middle of January and um, I signed up to a bit of the sky work and all that kind of stuff while I was over there. Looking sharp too, mate, I have to say. Bless you. You dress up okay? Yeah. It's good. That's yeah, the only time yeah, I yeah. really get to, otherwise I just yeah. dress like this. Um, and uh, yeah, I was a stay-at-home dad for a couple of weeks, and then my wife fired me because I didn't clean up the house. Um, <laughs> the kids were fine. They were, were they? They were yeah, okay they with it? After they were fed. You found all of them, though? Oh, you moved up a few boxes <laughs> here and there, another one popped out. for them scream. Yep. Yeah, they're right still awake. Right well, they're still alive. So, um... Yeah, I, I, then I got fired from that, and, uh, and and Gibbo gave me a call, and we texted each other and, and met up with him, and um, he knew my story that you know I did a bit of I helped coach in that little bit with the with the Hurricanes when I wasn't playing, and met with Plum every day to sort some stuff out, and so I knew I wanted to get into coaching. Yep. Um, I, I I love the game of rugby and I'm rugby nuts, so I kind of I watch and I try and find loopholes and what's happening, and that I just don't stick to what's what's happening and it gave me a, Gibbo gave me a call and you know, uh, Andre was, was in Japan for, for a few months and he just asked if I could jump on board and help with the skills and all that kind of stuff and my official role is community coach resource right? Um, or resource coach or whatever it's, it's called so at the moment we're just, I, I've been doing a lot with the academy, yep. I went into academy taking them for some trainings and uh, we're getting into the club uh, Wellington 15 games coming up so um, no, I enjoyed it. You Do know. you have a role at the end of the year? So we're NPC time? Yeah, well, when um, NPC, I, um, my role is to jump between attack and defence and just, I guess, try and give different ideas to the attack and defensive coaches, help the players, so I uh, still get to be part of the, the Lions yeah. um, in a coaching aspect, which is, which is cool and I'm competitive. Um, really? Well, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> so it gives me the, the chance to go out there and try to help us win games by looking at different scenarios in the game and giving the guys different ideas. So nice. Different set of eyes, eh? Well, yeah, I'm different. I can, I'm not out on the field to do it anymore. Yeah. So, um, you know, I've got to take a step back, which I found the hardest part of taking the drills is I just want to get in there and compete and, and win. But, um, you know, my job is not to do that. It's to, it's to get the guys to do it. And um, Yeah, I haven't missed playing, which is which is cool. You haven't? Uh, no, I haven't. Really? Um, no. No, I haven't missed playing. I, I got to the end of, of, of my rugby and it was either I, I could keep playing, but it was just kind of keep playing to get money. And, and when you're at that stage, there's no, there's no point in playing anymore. Or I was trying to get a, a foot in the door coaching because I knew that's the next part I wanted to do. So I've been given a, an opportunity. Nice. And uh, you know, I've been excited about it. I've been doing it for the last couple of months and been excited. What have you seen? Are you excited about the, the cattle you're working with? Are they, what have we got here in Wellington? Are we going to have a Are we going to have a, a good season? Plenty coming through. Well, hopefully, we can, you know the lions and you know I've just jumped on now, but when we get to that, when we get to that stage, it can build on what they did last year, and you know, hopefully, I can contribute. Um, but it, it, in club rugby, it started off very interesting. You know, the games were a little bit, I guess, no one kind of well, they kind of knew what they wanted to do, but the skill set wasn't quite there and the structures where each round is getting better and better. Um, so some of the games that I watch now, I sit there on a Monday and, and we've got them all on film. Yeah. And me and Gibbo will just watch through the, the games and, and see what's happening and identify talent and 
um, and, and just enjoy some rugby. So, um, but that's cool. I mean, it's getting better. Um, we, we, uh, what I've noticed is that everybody's trying to be the man yep. in club rugby, which is, has been happening for years. You know, the, <laughs> if, if your job was just to carry hard, but you want to step and yep. do that kind of stuff. I mean, but now I think a lot of teams are realising that you can't always be the man every time. You've got to do your role, and once you do your role, the team will find success, and that's starting to happen in club rugby, which nice. is good. You doing anything at the Rams? Back it up a hut? No, I, I, I went and took a, a session a couple of weeks back, or last, when well, no, a week before, and um, just took them through a defensive clarity session, and which they asked me to, and um, but that was the only time I'll go back in, in a few weeks' time and just talk to coaches from uh, the top level down. Um, if they got some Q and A's and all that kind of stuff, so they're in the process of organising that. Um, I went to Johnsonville last nice. week with, with Gibbo to just try to give them some ideas. So, um, which is cool because these these guys, you know, it, it's interesting at club level because you got the some guys that want to be professional rugby players, some guys that you know enjoy it for a hobby, and you got those other guys that have three nights uh, or three days of the week they get to get away from their kids and their wife for a bit, so they want to. <laughs> You know, that they go and play some rugby. So, um, you know, there's a mixed level of, of how hard you can push them yeah. and that kind of stuff. But it, it's good, you know, most of them are there to enjoy themselves. And going along to a session, they all kind of want that enjoyment factor, which is, like, I'm, I'm, I'm big for my coaching is get learnings, get details, but still got to have fun and compete. Nice. And uh, a lot of the club guys are doing that. Yeah. Let's go, let's talk a little about you as a, as a person. So fantastic, you're back in the game. Long, glittering career, as we know, and, and you know, often the, the character of the, the teams and whatever. Superstitious? Any superstitions? Game day? Um, Anything, same socks, same undies, any, no undies, whatever? No, nah, no, nah, I, I just have a wristband. Uh, first of all, it started because I, I worked with my old man, and he's, he's a builder, and we were cutting steel to make piles. And so I was on the grinder and it started, the sparks sparked my bottom of my pants. So I started to cut them off and turn them into three quarter pants. And when I got to the zip, I couldn't get it. So I turned the knife my way without thinking and missed and split my... Right. So I got abused by the old man, but this was a long time ago. And then, so I taped it up for the games and then I had my, my first boy and I wrote Cassius on it. And so every game, um, didn't miss a game where there was a practice game or, or what, yep. I wrote the kids kids names, names on, on there before the game so ended up having the four of them on there um, every game since 2006 nice worst so room name roomless worst comes out and you Corey Jane you are with and you go oh no well it's an interesting question because some guys you the guys that you know the best and you get on with the best that you want to room with are the bad ones too because you know when you're with guys that you know in the team but you never really you don't really hang out with a lot, you kind of keep to yourselves where, uh, like a Julian Savia, Israel Dagg, I mean if there was the worst, and they'd probably top everyone's list if they really got to know them, because Jules, it sounds like he chokes when he snores and he's very, <laughs> very selfish, so like he will never turn the light off, uh, he'll, he'll, he'll be standing up and you'll like, be in bed and you're like, Jules, can you turn the light off? And he'll be like, no, nah, I just got in bed, and he'll be walking to his bed, past the light. So he's very selfish, and, and Israel Dagg, I mean, um, smelliest, dirtiest really? person. Oh, oh I, uh, I made a mistake of years ago. You know, when you, we did, I'm a messy roomie, so I throw my clothes down, he's bad too. And I was like, are these my clothes? And I was like, and I did the, picked up some tights and I did the sniff test. Nice. And it was like it, they'd been in the rubbish for about four months. Like I smelled, oh, I knew straight away they were his. And uh, so that's what kind of, person he is and he doesn't he loves it he loves nice. the fact that he that he's grubby um, so those would be the two I don't know favorite food favorite food um, McDonald's KFC best ground if you had to play one more game of rugby where would it be um, I mean I like, I like the cake tin, the cake tin um, but or Suncorp or Kings Park Durban um, I don't know why I like it there I've never won ever in my whole <laughs> And the whole time, but just there's something about that ground that, you know, the stand and how passionate they play over there, it's, yeah, that gets me. What do you think of as you're running out the tunnel, cast your mind back a wee bit, World Cup final, whatever, you're running out of the tunnel, you run through, out from the dark into the, into the thing, what's the last thing you think of? 
Um, do I still look as good as I did when I looked in the mirror nice. before I went? No. Okay, no, I mean, I, I, I don't think of anything. Go out there and, and let's have some fun. It, it, you know, I, I don't really think about the game until it's kickoff. Yep. And then, you know, you get a bit of contact or you catch a ball or whatever, and then you're into it. Um, because of my position, I don't have to be banging my head against the wall. <laughs> you know, like, so, you know, like forwards, because they're into it straight away. Exactly. Where, where I don't have that. So I used to worry about it. I used to be focused all day and be nervous, and I hate being nervous. Yep. And then I found ways to just calm myself down. And when it was rugby time, it was rugby time. And when it wasn't, it wasn't. Toughest opponent? Um, toughest opponent? Oh, I'm not too sure. The guys that I enjoyed playing the best was Brian Habana and Digby Aini. Yeah. Um, and they, for different reasons, Digby was, he with the ball. Uh, he, was, he was a threat. And then when you look at Brian, um, just his understanding for the game, being in the right position, not necessarily with the ball, but defensively, you always knew where to be and how to try and shut things down. So they were the two guys that I enjoyed the most. Kane's good enough to go the way? Yeah, I think they're having a good year this year. Um, you know, they're winning a few on the trot, which is good. I mean, the, the, the good thing about Super Rugby that we've seen this this year um, is that you know, any team can win or push you in the games. Um, it's good to see the Sunwolves win in the weekend as well. So. It'll be interesting once it gets closer to, to playoff times, you know, when, when points are really on the line, see what teams are really made of. Them. Yeah. Come talking about playoffs, Swindale Shield round 11 this weekend, mate, and a couple of upsets last week. We ask everyone that comes in to, to hang them over and put a, put a point of view out there. Hard Old Boys Avalon this week? Uh, Hard Old Boys. Right. Yep. Johnsonville Upper Hutt? Uh, upper Hutt. Really? Okay, sorry. Oh, wow. um, Ori's Norse? That'll be a good one. Uh, I'm probably going to lean towards Norths. They've been playing well lately. They're going okay, eh? Mm. Paraplum, a couple of big results for them in the last couple of weeks, which is fantastic to see. They've got a big mountain to climb this way. Look, the, the Billy Goats are going out there, OBU. Uh, OBU will win, but I, I wouldn't mind seeing Plum get up. <laughs> I wouldn't mind it. Petoni, Wellington, big traditional fixture here. Yeah, I, I think Petoni, Petoni will win that one. Paniki, last weekend went out to Ngāti Tower and fell over. MSP stayed at home and fell over against yep. Avalon. They're going to walk across the road out at Kilburnie, yep. across Kilburnie Crescent there. Paniki, MSP, Paniki at home? It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter there, does it? Yeah, does across the road. Um, well, the players will tell you different. Oh, Believe yeah, me. Yeah. They ground. will tell you it is a big difference. The soil's a little bit different. No, yeah, one wind, field goes that wind, way. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, one no, no, wind yeah, blows yeah, that way yeah, if it's yeah, that right way. Yeah, okay. no, quite right. Um, Paniki. Okay. Um, Wainui Tawa? Wainui. I think Wainui are the most unlucky team this year. That, like every one of their losses have been like within five points, or most of them. Yeah. They've been there or thereabouts, just can't seem to get the win. So. Canes, Reds? Oh, Canes. Bye. How oh, many? Bye, how oh, many? Boy. No, oh, boy. Oh, anything like last week when the Reds went and played the Sun Bulls, uh, they'll chalk up a bit. They'll get, um, it'll be 13 plus. 50 points. No, not 50 points. That's just silly. 30 points. 13 points. 30. 30. Right, we'll nug it down. You realise that this is being recorded. We'll see yeah. it. Corey, thanks for joining us, mate. No, no Great worries. that you're back in the capital city and, and back and doing something that you love. Um, you realise that I have a bit of a role in there too, so you're going to get a phone call too because I'd like to see you at 7.30 at Hot Hot High Park very shortly. Yeah, that's another story. We'll as long as you get me on the golf course. And yeah, mate, I can always do that. <laughs> Wellington Club Rugby, Round 11, Swindale Shield, bumper weekend coming up. Those places are starting to tighten up as we head to the Jubilee Cup round. Thanks to Corey Jane. We'll see you again next week.